December 7, 1941, the Japanese launch a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. Nine hours later, the Japanese attacked the Philippines, then a Commonwealth of the United States. The attack devastates the American Air Force that is based there. Weeks later, the Japanese invade the Philippines. Without planes to fly, the men of the U.S. Army Air Corps are handed rifles and become infantrymen. Ben Steele is one of these young soldiers. A young man from Montana, he grew up working on cattle ranches. Steele and his fellow soldiers spend the first months of the war fighting in the jungle of the Bataan Peninsula. But they are cut off from the United States and no rescue is coming. They quickly run low on food, ammunition, and medical supplies. On April 9, 1942, the American forces on Bataan are surrendered. Steele surrenders to the crew of a Japanese tank. He then joins 75,000 American and Filipino troops on a forced 65 mile march to the town of San Fernando. It will come to be known as the infamous Bataan Death March. The heat is intense and the prisoners have virtually no food or water. Those who are ill, wounded, or too exhausted to keep up are executed by the Japanese guards. Steele tells himself to not think about the terrible things happening and to keep walking. He vows to survive. When the men reach San Fernando, they are packed into boxcars for a train trip north to the POW camp O'Donnell. It is a sweltering 110 degrees. Some of the men die in the boxcars. The survivors arrive at Camp O'Donnell. Medicine, food, and water are in short supply. Camp O'Donnell's hospital soon has a ward named Zero Ward. The sickest prisoners are taken there to die. Other prisoners then form burial details to bury the dead. So many men die each day that they are buried in mass graves. Like his fellow POWs, Steele suffers from a variety of illnesses, including beriberi, dysentery, pneumonia, blood poisoning, and malaria. He is worked to the point of death and is then sent to Bilibid Prison where he spends agonizing months in the prison's hospital. In January 1944, he recovers enough to be sent to Cabanatuan, another prisoner of war camp. There he grows vegetables for the Japanese guards. He is so hungry, he contemplates eating some of the vegetables. He changes his mind after witnessing the fate of another prisoner of war who did so. In July 1944, Steele is selected by his captors to work as a laborer in Japan. He boards a ship with hundreds of other men. The POWs nickname the transport ships Hell Ships. It is an appropriate name. On the month-long journey, the prisoners live in filth. The death toll climbs as the men succumb to disease and malnutrition. Steele survives and is taken to work in a Japanese coal mine about 80 miles from Hiroshima. He is there on August 6, 1945 when an atomic bomb is dropped on Hiroshima. He and his fellow POWs have no idea what has happened. A week later, however, they are informed by their captors the war is over. Steele returned home after the war, but struggled with memories of his captivity. Over the next decades, he became a critically acclaimed artist of the American West. But the Bataan Death March and the labor camps were never far from his mind. He filled notebooks with drawings of these memories. Ben Steele passed away at the age of 98 on September 25, 2016. His drawings of his prisoner of war experience were donated to the MacArthur Memorial, where they are preserved in perpetuity. Through Steele's art, 
future generations will understand the high cost of freedom while being inspired by a truly incredible life. And I had several Japanese students, and one of them told me one time, you can't hate us all. <laughs> I said, well, there are too many of you. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I don't hold anything against them anymore. Uh, I got over that, because anger is a very destructive force. You can't live with it, you know, and you just hurt yourself. It doesn't do them any harm, you know. So, I've got over that.